Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter 19. We're going to do the commentary on Isaiah chapter 19. A little bit of background here. Egypt was a major world power back in the, in the day in the Middle East. And because of the Nile River, it, had, it would water the area. So Egypt was the breadbasket of the Middle East during that time period. And as such, when you have water, you have crops, you have food, and if you can feed your people, they're strong, and uh, Egypt rose up in power. However, that also made it a tempting target for other pow world powers, because they wanted the uh, they wanted the land, and Assyria saw Egypt as a tempting target. I mean, let's face it: when you can grow lots of crops, you know, it becomes a target for annexation, so that you could take you know feed your people, right? And Egyptian wheat is. Uh, coveted by many. It's very expensive. And they found some wheat kernels in the pyramids and they tested it and it was genetically almost identical to some of the modern wheat that we have. And they planted some of this stuff and it grew. I mean, you're talking, you know, a couple thousand years old. Now, in the days of Joseph, there were uh, when it talks about him in Egypt, uh, there was a group of people called the Hiskosk, H-Y-S-K-Y-O-S uh, or something. I'll have to look it up. All right, it was H-Y-S-K-O-S, -S, the Hiskos. They were... From what I understand, they were a Semitic people, and they conquered Egypt. I mean, basically, overnight, they just rolled in and conquered Egypt. They were not native Egyptians. The native Egyptians were a of the tribe of, I mean, uh, of the son of Ham of Noah. And that's where the Canaan was one of Ham's son. So... The Hiskos, from what I understand, were a Semitic people. And when Joseph married, uh, what was it, Potiphar, uh, the, uh, it, the uh, well, they were of the Hiskos line, which were a Semitic people, from what I understand. He did, Joseph did not marry an Egyptian woman. So that's my understanding of it. He married a Hiskos. And uh, eventually... Egypt overthrew the Hiskosk. You know, and that's the problem when you have conquer a nation and then there's other nations uh, trying to get the same area and you have to send your army to defend the land that you've conquered. Well, then when you both fight each other and you're both exhausted, well, then the Egyptians rose up and overthrew the Hiskos. And that was the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph, the one that ordered the children of the male children of Israel to be cast into the Nile. That was the ones that Moses had known. Now e uh, Egypt was known for their many, many different gods. Perhaps you've heard of Ra, R-A. He was the sun god and not the S-O-N god. He was the S-U-N, the god of the sun and the sky. And then you had Set, S-E-T. 
you had Hathor. And um, if any of you had watched S Stargate or SG-1, um, a lot of those names came r right from the Egyptian gods. Anubis, um, you know, they were, they were the, the devils, let's face it. And the, uh, perhaps you've heard of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. I mean, you know, this is the kind of nonsense. So the Lord was not happy with Egypt. And uh, with that being said, let's see. All right, in um, Psalms 105 and verse 23, it says, Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And Ham was also the father of the Canaanites that uh, were of the satanic seed line that the churches will absolutely positively deny even exists. And uh, let's see, he was also the father of modern day Ethiopia. Whether or not the current two-legged beings that occupy Ethiopia at this time were the ones that occupied it thousands of years ago, I do not know. But uh, And just remember that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. All right, so with that being said in a background, let's go to Isaiah chapter 19. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Let's pause for a moment. Uh, just remember something. Perhaps you've heard of the city of Alexandria in Egypt. That was named after Alexander, the so-called Great, the Greek Macedonian that conquered pretty much the entire known world. He had conquered Egypt, and uh, they named the city after him, Alexandria, uh, in his honor. So when the um, Romans later became the dominant world power years later, uh, they burned the library at Alexandria, which was considered possibly the greatest library that had ever existed in the world. I don't know if that's true. You know, it's just that it was a depository of the world's knowledge. I'm sure a lot of it was occultic in nature. Perhaps that's why the Lord allowed it to be destroyed. But Greek was indeed the language of the Middle East for hundreds of years. They had conquered that area. As a matter of fact, when the Romans overthrew the Greeks and conquered the area, they had a lot of respect for the Greeks because they were great warriors and they adopted a lot of their gods. They renamed them. Uh, but the Roman, because they even call it Greco-Roman, you know, so the Romans and the Greeks were contemporaries, they were competitors, but the Romans respected the Greeks, and a lot of the Romans knew the Greek language. It was the common language of commerce. If you wanted to be in business, you better knew, know Greek, because the entire Middle East, they knew Greek. So that's just, and the New Testament was written in Greek. I don't care what the Hebrew roots people say, and their God, gods, whatever. All right. Verse 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, 
and they shall seek to their idols and to their the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits devils right and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards all right verse four and the egyptians will i give over into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king shall rule over them saith the lord the lord of hosts now i believe he's referring to the assyrian empire i think so but i'm not a i'm not a history scholar i have a background in it but that's you know i'm not an expert especially ancient history uh let's see verse five and the waters shall fail from the sea and the rivers shall be wasted and dried up and they shall turn the rivers far away and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up the reeds and flags shall wither the paper reeds by the brooks by the mouth of the brooks and everything sown by the bricks brooks shall wither be driven away and be no more the fishers also shall mourn and all they that cast angle into the brook shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Now, when they're talking about an angle, casting an angle, uh, they're talking about a fishing hook. I mean, that's what a fishing hook is. It's, you know, at an angle. Verse 9, Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks shall be confounded. Um, matter of fact, Egyptian linen, even to this day, is considered very high quality. Verse not, uh, 10. And they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools, and the counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know that the Lord of hosts have purposed upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of Nof are deceived. They have seduced, they have seduced Egypt. Even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. As a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail, branch or rush, may do. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. Uh, my note here. Just remember something. I cannot recall any place in the Bible where Egypt is spoken of nicely in the scriptures. I can't find not one place. Every time Egypt's mentioned, it's not in a good light. Verse 17. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt, because one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself, because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. And they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, 
and he shall send them a Savior, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation, yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord, and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be in that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt my people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel mine inheritance. Now there is a companion verse in Zechariah chapter 14. Let's start in verse 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Now, obviously, this is prophecy for the future when the Lord is reigning on the earth. Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Is Christ the king on the earth now? Only in spirit. But this is going to be when Christ is physically ruling and reigning the earth from Jerusalem when he returns to earth in glory. Verse 18. Here's the punchline. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So guess what, people? We're going to keep the feast of tabernacles in the kingdom. Right now, my opinion, I don't believe it's possible to keep the Feast of Tabernacle because you've got the Antichrist in charge of the area and you can't really, you can't do it. There was three times a year that the children of Israel were to go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord, but I don't really, honestly, I don't think it's possible now because the tares are in charge of the area. So, if you catch my drift. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.